Good morning, Faith Church. I want to welcome all of you here today, and we just want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all of the moms here. I hope you guys feel extra loved and appreciated today. In Psalm 100, verse 4, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. God is so worthy of all the praise that we can muster up and so much more. And I pray today that we've come ready to enter into his gates and his courts with a heart of praise. So why don't you all stand with us this morning as we lift our voices in worship. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. What a sweet fragrance that is rising into the throne room of God right now. Hallelujah. Lord, we glorify you this morning. We praise you and honor you. For this last song, I'd like to put a pen in your hand. In each and every hand that is in this room. And as we enter into this last song, I want your words to be penned to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want you to write him a love song this morning. Let everyone else in this room melt away. This is your moment between you and your King. Now let us bring him a beautiful offering straight from our hearts this morning. be 
celebrate and praise you and that we can just celebrate our mothers and just pray that you would bless us through the rest of this day your presence would just be with us and continue through the rest of this service we pray this in your name amen you guys may go ahead and find somebody to greet Well, praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. And all the time. Hallelujah. Wow, what a tremendous, tremendous time in God's presence. Man, it blesses my heart to hear you all praising God with everything that you have. Beautiful. Beautiful. Most of all, blesses our Lord and Savior. We want to welcome you to Faith Church this morning. And, uh, Thank you for coming out on this gorgeous Mother's Day. Moms, happy Mother's Day to you. We love you. We love you, moms. Today is a day that we set aside. Today's a day we set aside not only to honor the Lord, honor our moms, and honor our ladies of our church. 
And as pastor of Faith Church here, we are so grateful to all of our campuses for the women, the women that are intercessors, the women that are prayer warriors, the women that lead, the women that stand in the gap, the women that fight for their children, for their families, for their marriages, women that are influencing in the community, in the colleges, in our high schools. We're so grateful for the women of our church because they're godly women and they're bold women and they love Jesus. I want to just give you a couple quick announcements. Uh, this Saturday, uh, anybody working with children, uh, we have our children at risk seminar from 9 to noon. And this is all about safety. It's all about uh, your clearances and making sure that everything is lined up. And so we want you to be there uh, from 9 to noon. We're going to train you. We're going to equip you uh, to do children's ministry, youth ministry. So we encourage you to be there. And I'm excited. I am always get excited about water baptism. Uh, we're going to be having our next water baptism service on May 23rd in two weeks during this service. If you have not yet followed uh, Christ through water baptism, uh, but you've given your life to Jesus, we want you to be baptized. We want you to proclaim to the world, to the old devil, and to your faith family what Jesus has done in your heart. And so uh, if you want, or you're interested in being water baptized, please get a, grab a brochure in the foyer there on the, on the wall there. Fill that out. And then next Sunday at 1030, now you got to get here a little early, 1030, we're going to have a class right here in our conference room uh, to, to walk through what water baptism is, what you need to, what you can expect, what you need to do. And it's going to be a great day of celebrating Jesus. We also have a great celebration coming up called I'm Alive. This is going to be an outreach for life. Uh, it is a fundraiser, but more of a recognition that Jesus came to give us life. Amen? And we are for life. We are pro-life, unashamedly. We believe in life for all people, uh, all races, all ages. And so uh, it's going to begin with a motorcycle run. I don't know if we have any fellow bikers in here, but we're going to be uh, meeting over at Community Park for a motorcycle run and a, 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 motor, a biker blessing. And then we are going to be going uh, for about an hour and a half run. And then we're going to come back for a worship concerts, for speakers, for a little barbecue. And so uh, we need help. We need help setting up, tearing down. We need, if anybody's good on the charcoal grills, uh, we need hospitality. We need security. So if you're interested in that, sign up on the app. Come see us at the office. We appreciate that. One more thing before we move on. Last week, if you missed our service on Multiply, you need to watch it. Tom Reese was with us, our district leader, uh, with this idea of making disciples and planting churches. And God has laid on our heart, apostolically, that we are to be a church that multiplies. That we are to go and make disciples into every community that God leads us into. And so there's two things we're doing. We're trying to raise funds for our multiplication fund. We have, uh, we have churches that we need you to be praying for in Drums, in Weatherly, in Nanticoke. Uh, McAdoo just started up on Sunday nights. You know, I just came uh, off a conference this week in Harrisburg. Just, it was in tremendous speakers, tremendous worship. And then I went to, a, I went to South Philly. Uh, I got to catch a Phillies game in the afternoon. That was awesome. But I went to South Philly to a church called City Life Church. And to, and to be part of a conference, a seminar on what God is doing in the multiplying of churches and reaching communities that have not yet been reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're about. So our goal is to just have seed money of about 25000 in our account that we can, we've exhausted our already, uh, our account that we had for our churches. And so we want to have money there ready to go to what God has for us. We're going to take a special offering. Should be your, in, in your bulletin today. It's a, an envelope that says multiply. You can uh, pray over that as a family. Come back on the 23rd, ready to give that day of celebration. But we also have these beautiful lawn signs here. Uh, those are $20. But what they're for, not just for an investment towards multiply, but we want to build an excitement again in our communities that are dead, that are hopeless, that there is a church that is alive and well because of Jesus Christ and it is the Faith Church Network. And we want you all to be excited about that, display that, invite people to come and to be a part. So make sure you grab a lawn sign, make sure you uh, uh, participate and multiply. Because you know what? New churches, it's proven statistically, new churches are the churches that reach new people. 
it says that 60 to 80 percent of new people attending church will come because of a new church plant because of a new church work, because of a new additional service. And churches that have been existing for 10 to 15 years, 80 to 90 percent of their growth is just transfer growth, shuffling of the sheep, as we say. And friends, we want to be about winning the loss for Jesus. Amen? We want to reap the harvest for in a time like today. That's what this is about. So thank you uh, for your participation. Thank you for being here this morning. Today, we want to highlight our moms. We love you so much. You are the gem of faith, and we're so excited that you're here today to worship with us. Enjoy this little intro video before we continue on with our service. God bless you. I'm so bored. I wish I had something to do. <sighs> Thanks for letting me sleep in, kids. If you make a mess in the kitchen, please let me know so I can clean it up. Raising kids is so easy. I just love driving around all day. Oh, I never have to repeat myself. They always listen so carefully. Oh, look, an empty box of cereal. Love it. Just wipe it on your sleeve. It's pretty cold, but you don't need a coat. Oh, you don't have to push in your chair. Don't make your bed, you're just gonna sleep in it again later. I think I'll skip the coffee today. You know, these throw pillows look way better on the floor. I'm really not that busy. Well, you haven't showered in three days, but I think you smell great. We do have food at home, but let's just go out to eat. Just brush your teeth whenever you feel like it. Here, take my phone charger and go put it in your room. Oh, just leave your dirty dishes on the counter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's all pull out our phones. Youth sports are so cheap. Braces are so cheap. School fees are so cheap. Hey, can you come crawl in bed with me around 2 a.m.? Thanks. Okay, I just spent two hours making dinner, but if you don't like it, that's fine. Just let me know and I'll make you something else. Don't even bother looking for that. I'm sure it's lost and gone forever. Can somebody please throw something at my head? I mean, I can keep track of every single one of your things. I get a ton of sleep. I get a ton of gratitude from my children. I get a ton of unsolicited help with the housework. Oh, you don't have to hurry up. We're gonna be right on time. Can someone please throw something at the TV? Thanks for doing the laundry, everyone. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you use your outside voice? Ah! Fight, fight, fight! The floor of this vehicle is so clean, I can't believe it. Oh good, another trip to the grocery store today. Let's go. Hey, I'm gonna hop in the shower. Does somebody wanna come use the bathroom while I'm in here? Happy Mother's Day, mothers. <laughs> I am Stephanie Murphy. For those of you that don't know me, um, I have been blessed this last year to be the Women's Ministries Director here at Faith Assembly. It has been a challenging and wonderful year experience for me, and I could have not have done it without my teammates. Um, Connie Galam, Joanne Kubal, Amanda Scholl, Evie Wong, and Jenny Evans. Anyone interested in serving on this team with us? I'd love to let, just let me know. We'd love to have you join us. One of the changes we've made for this ministry was our new name. After much prayer, research, and dialogue, we felt God gave us the name Daughters of the King. Our theme verse is Psalms 45, 10, and 11. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Let the king be enthralled by your beauty. Honor him, for he is your Lord. Our mission statement is to encourage women to grow in their relationship with Christ by connecting with one another, serving together, and sharing their faith as the Holy, Holy, Holy Spirit-empowered women. Ladies, we are excited to, uh, that all of, huh, I can't talk all of a sudden. We're excited about all that God is doing among our women's ministries throughout the faith campuses. We are just excited to see just all of us come together everywhere. Last, yesterday we had a great brunch and it was wonderful to see every church represented. Nanticoke, Drums, uh, Weatherly, and I don't know if we had anybody from McAdoo, but we're working on them. It was just nice to be together and we've enjoyed some of that going on. So to get involved, just keep your eyes on the bulletin. Different things are, will be promoted throughout. We do um, our regular stuff. We do crafts and breakfast every month and we would love to have you join us at your convenience. 
Today we want to honor two special daughters of the king. First is our distinguished woman of the year. This award goes to a woman whose worth is more than a ru- more than, of more than rubies, a woman who displays virtue, honesty, grace, and kindness. Putting Christ first and others before herself, she shows this woman's, hum- shows this woman's humility. This woman is an example of to all women by her servant's heart, her love for her husband, her godly character, and her leadership as a daughter of the king. This year's Distinguished Woman of the Year is Sonia Lanker. <laughs> now, Sonia, Sonia didn't know this, so Sonia's a little embarrassed, but come join me, Sonia. Come join me. A little bit about our sister Sonia. Sister Sonia was born, was born in Brazil. She's lived here in the United States for 51 years. She was raised in the Catholic tradition. She's married to a wonderful to Bob for 52 years. She's mother of a daughter and a son and she, and two grandchildren which she is very fortunate to live very close to her grandchildren. She has been a follower of Christ for 46 years. She's, praise the Lord. She serves here at Faith in doing altar ministry, leading Sunday night prayer ministry, discipling women, and mentoring people in their marriages, as well as helping, as well as helping to lead the Forever Friends group. Her hobbies include, of course, her husband, Bob, Uh, He's a hobby. Gardening, walking at the mall, which I'm sure you've all probably possibly seen them there. And you can often find her singing her way through the day. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have something little for you. One of those flowers. Let me give that to her. And you can stay up here because we have another wonderful daughter of the king to honor. Also this year, we honor Mother of the Year. This award goes to a mother who is an example of patience, diligence, and unconditional love. Now I'm going to cry again. Okay. Love and has a desire to teach her children to love and honor God. She is a mother who balances her parenting between fun, discipline, growth, and surrender to God. This year's Mother of the Year is Michelle Sima. Michelle was born in New Jersey, but was raised here in this area. She has walked with the Lord since childhood. She has been married to her wonderful husband, Sean, for 23 years. She is blessed to be the mother of four beautiful children, Matthew, Joshua, Kaylee, and Logan. She serves here at Faith by being a small group leader in crossover youth ministries serves in the food pantry, and co-leads a small group with her husband. She has been a homeschool mom for many years and has recently finished her college courses with a degree of art major. I don't have a picture of her artwork, but she's beautiful, very, very gifted. She enjoys art, painting, and long rides in the car. That's for her. This is for you. Ladies, if you want to stay up here so I can pray, I want to pray at this time for all the women of our church. So um, if all the mothers can stand and we can applaud them as well. And can the remaining ladies please stand with them? We want all ladies to honor. We want to honor all of you ladies. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just praise you, Lord Jesus, for the blessing of being called your daughters, Lord Jesus. 
What a wonderful gift and blessing we have to be your precious daughters, Lord. And help each woman here to realize how precious they really are as your daughter. Help them to know how, you, how much you value them and how much you love them, Lord Jesus. No matter where they're at in life, Lord, just let them know just the perfect, perfect time and the perfect way how much you love them. Lord, we pray a great blessing upon our mothers. Give them strength, Lord, to be the women of God that you want them to be, to exemplify the traits that you desire for them to exemplify, Lord Jesus, to live boldly and courageously, Lord, as you desire, to be the light, Lord Jesus, in their homes and in their workplaces, Lord. Just pray your immense blessing upon them each today. In your precious name we pray, amen. Amen. At this time, the children are dismissed to go to their class. Have fun. Thank you, Bob and Sean, for helping me to do that. And ladies, please don't be mad at your husbands because I did ask them for all the pictures and the info, and and they so graciously helped me, thankfully. Today is a great honor for me to introduce a precious friend, Lynn St. George, who's going to speak with us. Lynn has been married to her husband for 29 years. She has three sons and six grandchildren. She's the author of several books and has many more planned to come. She enjoys crafts, decorating her home, and has a tremendous gift of hospitality. She serves here at Faith by writing the devotionals for First Fruits, speaking at various events, and supporting her husband, Kevin, in the deacon ministry, along with leading a small group in their homes. I have personally been friends with Lynn for almost 20 years, and I can tell you that Lynn has a burning passion to see the church fall madly in love with Jesus. Help me welcome my friend and this wonderful woman of God today, Lynn St. George. I love Steph. Don't you love Steph? That's my girlfriend. That's my girlfriend. She is such an encouragement to me. And she's also a prayer warrior. If ever I fall apart at the altar, Steph is usually the one to come pick me up, put me back together. So I'm going to start out with some prayer, a prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, how glorious you are. Lord, you have a room here full of people that love you. So we praise you. We lift up this service to you. I ask you, Lord God, to use my mind, my, my mouth, my heart to deliver this message to everyone. I pray, Father, that this is fertile seed that grows into fertile ground and brings forth a fertile harvest that will bring so much light into the darkness in this world. I pray, Father God, that today the ladies of the church will be blessed and even the guys. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. His name was Adam, and he was the first of his kind. Fashioned from the soil of the earth, brought to life by the very breath of God, he became a man. The wonder of his creation left the angels of heaven awestruck. But as as amazing as his creation was, he was incomplete. An An unfulfilled void lingered. The Lord God looked and proclaimed, it is not good for man to be alone. So the great physician performed his first surgery. He caused a deep sleep to overtake the man, Adam. Then he brought forth yet another miracle. Her formation was as mysterious as her essence. Born from Adam's side, fashioned from a rib. A rib intended to protect the man's heart. But unlike the bone from which she came, the woman was soft. Endowed with the heart of a caregiver, full of empathy and compassion, And yet, hidden within her heart, a wellspring of strength. Her frame, unlike the hard lines and defined muscles of her man, 
was soft and smooth. The man Adam gazed upon his new wife in wonder and adoration, and he proclaimed her to be his own, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She was breathtaking. She embodied all the facets her man lacked, and as the two became one, halves became whole, incomplete was perfectly balanced. Only God can create such perfection. From the garden and beyond, all of mankind has passed through the womb of a woman. She births, she nurtures, she comforts, she protects. She is lovely. She is the daughter of the Most High. She is woman. Aren't you so grateful to be a woman, ladies? I am so thankful that God formed and fashioned me to be a woman. I enjoy my life as a wife, as a mother. But I want to not only celebrate motherhood today, I want to celebrate being a daughter of the king. What a blessed privilege it is. Even if you are not a mother who has birthed a child, you birth all the time. You birth an ear for a heart that needs someone to listen. You birth a compassionate hug. You birth love for someone who's loveless. There is so much that we bring into the world as women, and it is such a celebration. Today, I want to honor another woman who does not get a high profile in God's word, but today I'm going to shine a light on her because she is truly special and very honorable. But before I go into her story, I'm going to give you the backstory, what happens in her world. And this takes place in 1 Samuel chapter 25, and I'm going to tell you the story of Nabal, who is her husband. Now, Nabal is not a good man. He's a very wealthy man. He has a lot of land. He has flocks. He has servants. And he has a grand estate. What Nabal lacks, though, is godly character. He is a self-centered person. And in fact, his name means fool. Why, I, you know, his mother prophesied something horrible over him. Um, so in this story... It takes place at a time when King David was not yet a king. He was running in the wilderness from King Saul. And he had a band of men, ragtag guys, that were following him. And they had situated themselves out in the wilderness near an area where Nabal's servants were tending their flocks. Having flocks out in the wilderness was a very dangerous thing because there were so many predators that could come and harm the, the animals. And so while the shepherds were tending the flocks, David's men and David formed a hedge, a protective hedge around the, these men and their animals so that nothing, whether it were animals or people, could harm the, the animals or the shepherds. David and his men were righteous, and they offered a beautiful protection for these men. Being in the wilderness, obviously, you lack resources. And so David sent his men to Nabal one day and said, it's shearing season. Would you please be willing to give us something of sustenance because they needed food? Nabal listened to these men, and being the scoundrel that he was, he said, who is this David? And who is the son of Jesse? Slaves get away from their masters all the time. I don't know who this is. And what am I supposed to do? Give up my food that goes on my table? Give everything away? Even though he had an abundance? First of all, everybody knew who David was. Remember, David was the one who killed the 10,000s that the ladies were in the streets dancing about. David was notorious in his day. And everyone knew. Listen, 
They didn't have CNN, they didn't have Fox News back then, but I'll tell you, word spread like wildfire in ancient times. They didn't need news outlets. Everyone knew who David was. And so he completely humiliated these men, scoffed at them, and sent them away. And when David's servants came back to him and told him what Nabal said, he was hot. David was so angry that he decided he was going to take revenge on this man. And he said, by this time tomorrow, not one of Nabal's men or Nabal will be standing because all of the men, all, David and all of his men drew their swords and they were ready to go to battle. Now, this is where the beautiful part of this story comes in. One of Nabal's servants went to Abigail. And here comes the star of this story. He went to Abigail, who's Nabal's wife, and told her what happened. And Abigail wasted no time. She went straight to her supply of food. She is an, a woman of wisdom and a woman on a peacemaking mission. So she went into her pantry. She pulled 200 loaves of bread, two jugs of wine, five sheep for roasting, five measures of roasted grain, 100 clusters of raisins, and 200 fig cakes. How many of you like fruitcake at Christmas time? And what she did was she sent all of these supplies with her servants and said, Go to David now. Take this food offering to him right away. She knew what her husband did. She knew her husband provoked the future king of Israel. And she was looking to tamp down this mess that he was about to bring on their household. Catastrophe, actually. So she went ahead. And let's look at 1 Samuel 25, verses 23 to, to the beginning of 25. And it says, now, when Abigail saw David, she dismounted quickly from the donkey, fell on her face before David, and bowed down to the ground. So she fell at his feet and said, on me, O Lord, on me, let this iniquity be. And please let your maidservant speak in your ears and hear the words of your maidservant. Please let not my Lord regard this scoundrel, Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name and folly is in him. What did she do? She ran out there. She jumped off her donkey and she went, she laid down prostrate before him and said, please forgive us. This is my fault. She wasn't even involved in it. But she had a spirit of humility on her. And when she bowed down before David and asked for his forgiveness and said, please have mercy on us. She said, my husband said this, but he's foolish. Forgive me. So she was a woman of great wisdom and beautiful humility. Then going on to the next, in verses 27 to 28, I want you to look at this. And now this present which your maidservant has brought to my Lord, let it be given to the young men who follow my Lord. Please, again, more humility, please forgive the trespass of your maidservant. Now look at this. Now she's prophesying. For the Lord will certainly make for my Lord an enduring house because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord and evil is not found in you throughout your days. Do you know that only people can prophesy who have a close relationship with the Lord God Almighty? Because it is in the secret place that you hear the voice of God and he whispers secrets unknown. 
She was a woman of God, and not only that, in her wisdom, what she did was she spoke to the heart of David. Scripture says that David was a man after God's own heart. He, his heart beat for God's. What did she do? She spoke his language. She spoke to his heart. It takes one to know one, right? David was a man after God's own heart. So was Abigail. She was a woman after God's own heart, and she knew how to speak to him, and she did. Verses 30 and 31 And it shall come to pass, she continues to prophesy, when the Lord has done for my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you and has appointed you ruler over Israel, that this will will be no grief to you, nor offense of heart to the Lord, either that you have shed blood without cause or that my Lord has avenged himself. But when the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then remember your maidservant. When she's talking to David here, she's saying to him, David, and I'm paraphrasing, if you do this thing that you plan to do, which she knew what was coming, you will have avenged yourself instead of allowing the Lord to be your avenger. Instead of taking this situation into your own hands and having to deal with shed blood, don't offend the Lord. Don't offend the Lord. Don't do this. And when she did this, she completely brought David down. Don't you love a peacemaker? I love someone when the whole room is in an uproar and you get one person that comes in steady as he or she goes and they bring a stabilizing force that says everything will be okay. They calm the situation down and they bring perspective. That's someone who wields power without raising their voice. And then the last thing that she did was she said, remember your maidservant. She said that because she was living in a dark situation. How many of us are living in a dark situation? How many people are living in the tension when someone else's sin collides with your righteousness? Let's take a look at the character of this gifted woman, this honorable woman that we're finding here in Scripture. Now, I love the way that this story plays out. It's like a fairy tale, but it's real. Those are the ones, those are the stories I love. Don't you, Marianne? She was endowed with wisdom from heaven above. One time I remember, I was in my prayer time, and it was so powerful, and it was, it was a vision that God gave me, and I will never forget it. I remember being bowed low on the floor before the Lord. And he showed me that because I held a lowly posture of humility, wisdom was mine. I saw before me a grand ocean. I saw the sunset in the distance and I saw the surf come in. And I was bowed low, and as the surf pulled back, I heard the Lord say, wisdom is found in the receding waters of humility. That when I am poured out, when there's nothing left of Lynn, when there's nothing in this woman, and I say, Lord, I've got nothing. I'm an empty vessel. Come and fill me. He fills me with wisdom from heaven above. And it rains down and it's refreshing and it fills my spirit and my soul. And I know things and hear things unheard. It's amazing. The wisdom of God is amazing. And if you don't have it, 
I want to encourage you to ask God for it, who gives liberally. We all need the wisdom of God, especially in this day and age, don't we? Hmm. I also want you to seek, if you are not already, to be a peacemaker. Perhaps your family struggles because there's dysfunction in it. Perhaps there's someone like Nabal in your family who just brings a darkness every time they show up, a heaviness that you don't know what to do with. I would encourage you not only to ask God for wisdom, but to put yourself in a position of peacemaking. And allow the Lord to use you to tamp everything down and be that stabilizing force that brings order and peace to the home. Abigail was prophesying to David. Now, I want to talk to you for a moment about the secret place. I love Psalm 91. I love the secret place. Only those who enter into the secret place hear the private whispers of God Almighty. My husband and I have been married for 29 years, and I know that man very well. He knows me very well. But there are many things about me that he doesn't know. And in fact... There are some things about me that are none of his business. Because they're between me and God. There was a time I can remember years ago that I spoke at a conference. And I remember coming off that conference and Kevin, don't come down on him for this because it was just a flip thing. He made a comment about something that I said that was a little bit of a kind of, kind of like, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't have said that, you know. And it kind of bared down heavy on me. And I remember in the middle of the night I got up and I went downstairs to get some allergy medicine because I was having an attack and I felt the Holy Spirit's presence all around me. And I went and I sat down in the living room. And as I sat there, I could see from a distance the Lord. Now, I could only see swirling smoke. His presence was so heavy all around me. And the Lord said to me, when you spoke, I said, well done. You heard me. And I said, yes, Lord, I did hear you. And he said, your husband said something. And all you thought about was what he said. And he posed a question to me that I will never forget to this day. He said, is your husband greater than I? And I said, no, Lord, he's not. He's not. And he said, you listen to me. You listen to me. You see, my husband is a wonderful man. He is my helper. He is my encourager. He is... He's my, he's my dream guy. He is a hunk of hunk of burning love. <laughs> and my middle son's over here shaking his head no, like I'm such an embarrassment to him. But he's not my God. My daddy, he is my advisor. He is the one who speaks to his daughter's heart. He's the one that knows my heart inside and out, and he's the one that knows every one of your hearts inside and out. He placed your heart in your chest cavity. He built every bit of you. He fashioned you, formed you, and placed you into your mother's womb. Your father knows your heart. And what he would say to you today is, come into the secret place. Come, come and be with me, child. I want to teach you things unknown. I want to be your God. I want to be your father. I want to be your Abba. Abba is personal. 
It's close. Treasure the secret place. Make the secret place your gem, what you look forward to. When you say to the world, I gotta go, I got an appointment with Jesus. Go find your secret place and let him envelop that time, envelop your spirit. Now, let's talk about Abigail's circumstances. Abigail was a righteous woman, but she was linked to an unrighteous man. That's a very difficult situation to be in. There is a heaviness to being yoked to someone whom you're unequally yoked to. If you're in the market for a spouse, can I tell you something? Look for someone who loves Jesus. I don't care how cute he is. I don't care if he opens the door for you. Does he open the door for Jesus in his heart? That's what I want to know. I don't care if she dresses so sharp. I don't care if all the guys say, he's so hot, it's your girlfriend. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care how beautiful she is. What I care about is that she's beautiful in her heart. Does she love Jesus? When you find someone who loves Jesus, you got yourself someone to marry. <laughs> right? Because if that person truly, truly knows how to love Jesus, they're going to know how to love you. Oh, now, now we're preaching, right? You, when you know how to love horizontal, is that horizontal? No. When you know, my husband, right? <laughs> when you know how to love vertical, then you'll learn how to love horizontal. That's what we need. That's what we need. Jesus first. You put the kingdom first and his righteousness, and he will add all of these things to you. That's all you got to do. You just put Jesus first. Really, the kingdom way is easy. Just put Jesus first. Just seek Jesus first. Just fall in love with Jesus, and everything will be fabulous. But see, the thing is, she was not living with a man that came from the light. She was living with a man of the darkness. I asked DJ if he would offer me something for an illustration. DJ, can you give me that, please? How many of us feel the encroaching darkness around us? How many of you feel that some days there is just a dark cloud that is over your head? How many feel like when you look around the world, you see things that are wrong being called right? You see justice being called injustice? You see persecution coming to the upright? You see crooked paths and the darkness is all around, and it just seems to be getting greater and greater and greater. Listen, I want to tell you something. It is getting dark out there, but you know what? There is something that will never, ever change. This cannot and will never be extinguished, no matter how much darkness is around you. Do you know why? Have a look up here. The light of the world came here, and he suffered a criminal's cross and bore the weight of our sin so that he could die, be raised again, 
and then come to live on the inside of each and every one of us. And when this light is on the inside of you, greater is he that is in you than the darkness that is all around you. You are the one that has the authority. You are the one that has the power of the dark over the darkness because the darkness will never be able to put you out. And in fact, let me encourage you by saying, I don't care how dark it gets out there because all it does is make us illuminate even brighter. The darker the circumstances, the brighter the child of God, right? But, okay, DJ, can we have lights? But here's the thing. Let's talk about the fairy tale ending that I love so much. So after David accepted Abigail's gift, she went back home in peace. And when she got there, she found that scoundrel Nabal in the middle of a big party, and he was stone drunk. You don't talk to a drunk. Just keep walking. And she did. And the next morning, she went to see him. And she told him everything that happened. And when she told David, or when she told Nabal what happened, his heart became like a stone in his chest. And I think that he probably had a stroke because he was disabled for like 10 days. And at the end of the 10 days, God struck him dead. Justice. Listen. God will always bring the victory to the righteous. I don't care how long that trial is, God will always bring the victory to the righteous. Always. Because he's true to his nature, and his nature is just. And then, the crowning part of this story, David went and got Abigail. And he married her, and she became the bride of the king. And that's an awesome story. So this day, I'm honoring Abigail. But you know what else? I'm honoring the virtues that she brings forth in this story. The wisdom that she operated in. The humility that was so beautiful on her. I'm honoring the peacemaker that she was. I'm honoring her ability to hear the voice of God. And you know what? That's all the things that I want to see developed in the church. You see, when Abigail went before David, she became the one that would take the blame for her husband's behavior. The church has already had someone who took the blame. Jesus. He did. He took the blame. And when we come forth as the purified bride, then Jesus will take us and make us his own. I want Jesus to have a purified bride, refined, full of wisdom, active and alive, his bride has a beautiful humility upon her. Oh, Lord Jesus, that's what you deserve. Your bride should be spotless, Lord Jesus, spotless. I want to talk to you right now. I'm about to open this altar. Because I know that there are those of you that are sitting here that are in the tension of circumstances that are painful. And you just need prayer. Can I have some warriors come on up and line these altars that are willing to pray with some people? I want you to have someone that'll take you before the king this morning that will usher you in to his throne room where you can find deliverance and peace in the midst of your storm. I also want to make an invite here for those of you who just want wisdom from heaven.
You say, you know, I haven't ever sought that, but I want to be a, a, a man of God, a woman of God, endowed with wisdom from heaven above. I want you to come, and we're going to pray for wisdom for you. If you are someone who has an issue with pride, and you know that you have been thumping your chest and cracking your knuckles, and, and you just put up this facade, but you're really not that strong, I want you to embrace humility because humility is truly the way to strength. Strength that comes from heaven's throne. Peacemaking. Are you a fighter? Do you have a fighting spirit in you? Do you need the Lord to transform you into a peacemaker that just knows how to come into a situation and bring it down to a quiet hush? If that's you, come up here and let us pray over you. Oh, God. Oh, God, you're so good. We just praise you, Father. I thank you so much for this rich word that you've given to us today. I thank you for the awesome privilege of being able to be your mouthpiece. Lord, there is nothing greater than you. Nothing greater than you. So, Lord, have your way around this altar. I pray your Holy Spirit would move with might and power. And I pray, Lord God, that you would bring so many. Lord, they're all being ushered into your throne room right now. And as they're brought before your throne, Lord God, I pray that you would lay your hands on them yourself. And that they would feel the inflowing of the Holy Ghost. Unleash your power from heaven, Lord God. Have your way. Have your way. You are mighty and awesome, Lord Jesus, and we honor you this day 